want to appreciate God for the giving us the privilege to be alive. Let me remind us that this from tomorrow, Monday, we're going to have a fasting to round up the month of June. The Bible says, revive thy works in the midst of the year. Make no. That's the book of Habakkuk. So there is a revival of God's work in our life as we come to the middle of the year. So there will be fasting from, from tomorrow in church. We'll be meeting online, but on Thursday we're going to have prayer meeting, I believe. I will do prayer meeting on Thursday or Friday also. Friday is our solution night. Come and say solution night. Every Holy Ghost Christian member worldwide know what solution night means. That is the meeting that bet destiny, bet testimonies, bet so many things. The meeting that bet so many branches is called solution night. Now, we used to run it every month, but now we run it once in three months. And the, the June edition is starting, it's coming this Friday. Don't miss it. The theme is the touch of Jesus. How many of you want Jesus to touch them? Amen. Man cannot touch you. It's the touch of Jesus we need. So solution night this Friday, all night. We're going to be praying all night. Come and say all night. Say, let me hear you. No matter the modernization that we brought to Christianity, we still need all night prayer. And when God knows that you need all night and you are not doing it, he gives you malaria that will not make you sleep all night. How many of you have had malaria before? And you cannot sleep what? All night. So you have to be praying. God heal me. God heal me. God heal me. So don't wait for malaria VG. Come for the real VG this Friday. Even tap your neighbor and say, don't wait for malaria VG. Come for vigil this Friday. You know, when you need to fast and you are not fasting, God sometimes will allow malaria to take your food from you. Praise God. I know somebody say, if I'm sick and I cannot eat, you people should know there's a problem. Say, no matter I'm sick, I'm still eating. Praise God. Give you something clap for this morning. I'm going to continue our series we started on parenting. And if you haven't gotten this book, Parenting with Ease, if you are not a very good member of this church, you haven't gotten this book, Parenting with Ease. It's important to have this book. Don't, don't only have them, read them. Don't only have them. What do you do? Somebody came into my office in the house and he saw my library. He said, wow, have you read all this book? I said, yes, I've read about 70 to 80% of those books. Praise God. That is why I am having little wisdom I'm using. And wisdom is how your life is turning to. It's not how what you say. Don't tell people, I'm very wise. Let me see it in your life. By their fruit, you shall do what? By your life. Your life show wisdom. Don't tell people, I'm wise. They let me see in your life. The way you conduct your things. Praise God. So we're going to continue what we started last week on principle of effective parenting. I, talk, I title this principle of effective parenting. The principles of effective parenting. What are the things that make us a better parent, effective parent? We started looking at parenting last week. We look at so many things about parenting. We look at what constitutes a child that is well raised is not just to be godly, it's also to be useful for their society, useful for nation, for community. And we look at three kinds of parenting last week, authoritative, and the rest of them, if you are not in the service last week, go and, go and watch that because I want to maximize my time this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm tied to this principle of effective parenting. And I'm going to be taking to scripture. The first I'm going to be looking at is Proverbs 22 6. Proverbs 22 6. I wish I can get it in Amplify Classic if you have it. But if you don't have it, give me Amplify. 
but I don't want King James this morning. Praise God. Me and King James, we are fighting today. Praise God. Okay, amplify. Classic. Let's read together. Train up a child in the way, in keeping with his individual gifts of bent, and when he's old, he will not do what? Train up a child the way he should go. There is a way a child supposed to do what? To go. Don't train that child to fulfill your own purpose that you didn't fulfill. He didn't have head, brain for medicine. You want to force your child to become what? A doctor. Is it the way you God wants him to go? I want to be an engineer and since I cannot make it, my son will be an engineer. I'm an accountant and I don't want the family business to be destroyed. So I must raise my child to become an accountant. When my parents used to tell us that we're going to be ministry, do ministry, we used to fight him. Who wants to continue this? But guess what we are doing? We are inside it. I'm sure he didn't force us to do that. It was a calling of God upon our life to do that. So we should be able to understand parenting. Let us look at Genesis 18, verse 17 to 19. Genesis 18. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? So God sometimes hides things from people. He will not hide it from you. Your amen is weak. Yeah. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and a mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. That they shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment. And that the Lord may bring upon Abraham which has spoken of him. Now, God was interested in Abraham because he's going to build, raise his children well. The purpose, the will of God for our life is that everything we are doing should be eternal, should be perpetual. God is a God of generation. I am the God of Abraham, the God of who? And the God of who? Jacob. Is a God of generation. God is not just interested in you. He's interested in your seed that will come after you. God spoke to Eli. I'm going to make sure your family continue to serve me. But Eli refused to parent or raise the children in the way of the Lord. And God turned his mind against them. And began to raise Samuel. I pray over you today. You will parent your children well. The grace will fall upon you. The wisdom will fall upon you. Come and say, I receive it. Having children is not as important as raising them. Biological, I, I, I got pregnant, I carry baby. It's not a big deal. It's not what? That's not a big deal. The bigger deal, will you raise them well? That's a bigger deal. You can even go and adopt a child from a motherless baby home and raise that child well. Are you with me? Raising kids is a battle. It's a warfare. It's what? It's what? It's a warfare. It's a battle to raise a child. It's a battle. When my mother was training us, when they bring Koboko to beat us, as he's bringing us, he's praying with it. <laughs> Are you with me? Before you become bad child, Holy Spirit will not allow it. Jesus, help me beat him. <laughs> because my mother believed that your character, that attitude you are bringing, demon is also empowering it. Is she not right? Huh? Every time God is interested in bringing 
great children into the world, he will first shut the womb of the women that will bring them. And when their womb are shut, they start praying to build foundation before a child somewhere will come out. I speak over parents here today. Your children will turn out well. I'm going to give you some principles that will help us in raising our kids. The first principle this morning is what you do matters. What you watch, what you do matters, especially in their, in, their, in their front. What you do before them is very, very important. A spirit, everything, if you want your child to be like you, don't tell them to do, to be like you. Do it, let them see it. Children look at you as a model. They, you, they, you, they, they look at what their parent does and that's what they do. It's very important. If you tell your child that I'm not at home, I am in the house, I'm sleeping. When a visitor comes, tell them I am not at home. What are you training that child to become? Huh? Liar. If you tell your child, don't greet everybody around, they are bad people. What are you telling that child? To keep malice. So, we need to understand that everything we are doing, our children will repeat it. It's a matter of time. If it's positive, fine. Abraham lied. When Isaac came, he also do what? Because, per adventure, he saw the weakness of his parents. So, what you do before them matters. That's the first thing. Children are learning from what you are doing. It's a principle. If you want them to do well, do it well. If you are abusing neighbors and you think you don't know, they will be doing it one day. And if you are a prayer person, they will be praying one day. I've shared with you, we always force our children to pray, force them to fast, and they will be complaining, they will be shouting, they will be squeezing their face like they have been sucking lemon for 10 years, but we don't care. When my son was denying student visa to U.S. to go and study, a young man declared three days fasting and vigil in the house. I came out to the living room upstairs in the midnight and I saw him praying. Every power that does not want me to travel to U.S., I bind them. I hid myself somewhere. I said, wow, why can God increase the problem of this boy? So that he can pray more. Praise God. I hid myself. I didn't want him to see me. I told my wife in the morning, ah, your son is fasting and praying. Oh, that's good, though. Okay. This thing we are doing, they are seeing it. Praise God. It's important. My last daughter is the one that doesn't like fasting, all those things. Because she told me that the way she looks, she likes enjoyment. I said, who likes suffering? Who told you I like suffering? But when she wanted to go to U.S. to get a student visa, she called me. I was in U.S. that time. He said, Daddy, I'm on five days marathon fasting. I said, for what? Ah. Say those U.S. embassy, you don't go them ordinary high. Ah, I said, you are my daughter. I'll be praying for you every night when you are, when you are about to pray. And she did five days marathon fasting. Where did he see you do it? It's because he saw me doing it. He saw me and if children do it. If you want them to do what you are doing, begin to do it. Are you hearing me? Number two. Am I boring you? Number two, you cannot be too loving over your children. You cannot be what? Too loving. I love my child. I love my son. Hey! There are two kinds of love in the Bible. The first one is tender love. What do I call it? Come and say tender love. Daniel chapter 1 verse 9. Daniel 1.9. Now God has brought Daniel into favor and 
tender love with the prince of the eunuch. So there is a tender love. That's the kind of love we all understand. That's the love that existed between husband and wife. And they held each other. And said, dear, I just love you. Since the day I met you, I cannot sleep well. That is what is called what? Tender love. But let's look at the second love. Proverbs 3.12. Proverbs 3.12. Correcting love. For whom the love, whom the Lord loved, he corrected. Even as a father, the son whom he delighted. So, when you want your child to turn well, you release what I call what? Correcting love. Love that corrects. That's the love that makes my mommy to bring Kuboko and be beating us. Bah! Before you turn to this, I will be there. A good parent must learn to correct their children. Learn to do what? Are you with me? You must be the one that corrects them. You know, if I love you and I see that you are not dressing well, I can call you and say, oh boy, can you dress better? If I don't care about you, if you like, go naked. You are on your own. Am I right? So, correcting love is very important. And you know, couples must correct each other because they love each other. Am I right? But you know it's difficult for a couple to correct each other. Is it easy? Huh? Because as she's talking, you are defensive. You are de But it's correcting love. It's correcting love. It's very, very important. Very important. I've seen parents tell me, my child is my friend. My dear, if you need friend, go and call people you went to school together. Are you with me? Your old school, old, old school, go and call them. Your child is not your friend. Your child is not what? Let me tap your neighbor. Say, your child is not your friend. You can only use friendly tool to raise them. You can be friendly when you are tracing them, but your child should not be your friend. You are the authority figure over your child. Who are you? Say, let me hear you. Say, let me hear you. You are the authority figure over your child. You can be loving. You can be, you can be, you can be friendly. But when you change your eye, your child should know daddy has come. Mommy has what? When you say, move, you should know that authority is what? But if you use all the love in this world over that child, you will, you will destroy a destiny. Are you with me? Samson parent did not correct him. Delilah corrected him. Am I right? They hire a slave queen. Slave queen. Am I right? They paid that lady a lot of money. The Philistine told her, how much will you take to, to get this giant down? She said, well, let's start with $100,000. She said, ah, it's too much now. So negotiated. Okay. Can you pay $75,000? So the lady was paid. She was paid to sleep with Samson. Who is paying people to get you down? May they not succeed. Yeah. Number three, are you with me? Number three, be involved in your child's life. Be involved in your what? Get involved. Be a part of their life. There are three seasons in the life of you and your children. How many seasons? Three seasons. Number one, season one, parent is in charge. That's season one. Parents are what? In charge. Season two, children are in charge. There's a, a time when you are in charge of that child. Stand up, go to school, wake up, take money. Then you are in charge fully. There's another season when children are in charge. They do what they want to do. But there's a season that children will be in charge of both his life and your life. You will get old. 
And she said, they need care. They need care. Me, oh, I haven't taken my drug. Mommy, I'm tired. I'm tired. See, I will come when I'm after. They were I said, do me. What about me? This leg is paining me. Help me carry it. Mommy, I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy now. I'm busy now. What you do in season one will determine what they will do to you in season three. Are you with me? They can form busy for you. Because you are too busy also to stay with them. Are you with me? As busy as I am when, we are, when our children were young, I have Saturdays morning to stay and discuss life with them. We sit down. It's our open day. Everybody will talk. And by evening, we are going to restaurants. So because of my motivation of restaurants to go and eat out, my children will wake me up at Sally at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning. Daddy, when are we having the meeting? It's not the meeting. It's the moti. I give them motivation. It was a, it was a curriculum. It wasn't, it wasn't, I'm not guessing it. That's why we call it the intentional parenting. What do we call it? I'm not going to attend parenting conference coming. We'll talk if you will come. But you know, African people, we don't like training. We don't like seminar. We don't like training. So everyone are looking at me now. Pastor, pray. Let fire come down. Come on Friday. But today, listen well. Are you still with me? You need to raise your children very well. So that you will not start crying by the time you are over 50. Over 60. Praise God. Praise God. Even my, my wife in heaven will be happy that these children are doing well. Am I right? Are you with me? When my daughter told me, Daddy, it's time to get married in June, I said, no, June cannot walk. June cannot walk. We just bury my mom. We're going to bury my mom in March. She said, Daddy, June must walk because we need to do something good in June to forget what happened in June because my wife was buried in June praise God so for one week we are fighting because my daughter is stubborn I'm also very stubborn praise God so we are not talking we will shout on phone I say no I am your father I sent you to school all the grammar you are speaking I put it in your mouth so people will pay for grammar. When you can't speak good grammar, you know your children, your parents are poor. Are you with me? That English you are speaking is money. Is what? When you hear people speak so well, good morning, everyone say, oh, he has a good background. Am I right? It doesn't mean your brain is correct. Oh. <laughs> Some people speak well, but they don't have anything here. Oh. It's just a language. Abby? Eventually, my son was a broker of peace. I said, Daddy, listen, Daddy, listen. And we make peace. Praise God. And I said, The condition for the wedding is that we'll have only less people there because I don't have money to entertain 2,000 people. I can go and rob a bank because I want to get married. My daughter wants to get married. If I've announced on this altar that my daughter is getting married, all the congregation will be there, Abby. And you would like to eat, Abby? <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> and we need to rent a hall, and they will decorate those halls. Am I right? Many people are annoyed with me, even to this morning. 
Pastor Andre, you was telling me of somebody that was very annoyed. I need to call. Why can Pastor Moses' girl, daughter get married? So I'm not important in his life. He may call not marry. <laughs> My daughter is already in America with his a beautiful, a handsome husband. They are on the moon. They have been eating honey in the moon now. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, my time is moving. Who is, who is turning this clock? May God deliver you. <laughs> so we need to be involved in the life of our children. Spend time with your children. I don't allow people under me not to spend time with their family. No matter how busy we are, you must spend time with them. Right now, I'm so free. My children are grown. I mean, the last one is the one that got married. And that one is, you can sell the whole world and collect money. He's so intelligent. So, I'm free. Because God has helped us to raise them. I speak over parents here. Your own will be better than my own. Your amen is weak. Oh. Number four. Adapt your children to fit. Adapt your parenting to fit your child. Adapt your parenting to fit your child. Keep pace with your child's development. Consider how age is affecting the child's behavior. Now, what does that mean? It means that every child is different. Every child. They are different. Children are not the same. My three biological children, one is a sanguine, the other one is a male, the other one is choleric. And you, you treat them differently. They are not the same. You need to adapt your parents to fit the child's life. My first daughter is very, very emotional. If you buy an handkerchief, they look at the handkerchief and say, hey, daddy, thank you. I like it. But if you buy my son aeroplane, you just look at it. Okay, that's fine. Don't you like it? If I like it, I'll be jumping all over the world. You even feel like, what kind of human being is this? But my last born does not wait for you to buy. He will tell you, Daddy, I need this. I need. Do you work for me? Do you put money in my pocket? Say, yeah, but you are my father now. What's your assignment? <laughs> She always take what she needs. She's not waiting for you. You come after you to collect it. Three different children, different ways of raising them. And as children are growing, you have to understand how you can pace their, the way you raise them. There's a time you are in charge of their life fully. There's a time you are advising. What are you doing? What are you doing? You are just an advisor. The time is coming, you are a counselor. You are just to counsel them. It would be a good idea if you do this. Okay, I'll consider it if it's, if it's work with my time, my thing. Praise God. There was time I proposed something and my son said, Daddy, that proposal cannot work. And I'm going to give you five reasons why it will not work. One, two, three. By the time you finish number four, I concur. Are you with me? Because at the level we are, cancel You can only cancel them. Adapt your parenting to fit your child's life. Know how they are growing. You know, a 13-year-old child behaves differently. Am I right? You know how they behave differently? They believe that they are not, they are not 18. What? I'm a teenager. Teenager means you are not a child, but you are not an adult. It's the most troublesome time. It's a time they are discovering themselves. It's a time you can't just say, sit down. You say, sit down for where? I, I know, mommy, I know what I'm doing. And you say, you know what you are doing? Because it's a teen, what? It's a teenager. It's a, it's a very dangerous time. In Western world, when your child becomes a teenager, there's a celebration. You are in a big trouble. Because the child is discovering his identity or his identity. So it's not a child. If it's a child, you can treat him as a child. If it's an adult, you can treat him as an adult. It's neither an adult or a child. 
you need to be smart as a parent. You need to be what? I think we should establish a parental college. <laughs> we need to learn how to raise our kids. Easy skills. They be lo- may the Lord give you grace. Number five, establish and set rules. Establish and set what? Rules. Rules replace God in our life. You must learn to manage your child's behavior when it's young so that when it's older, when you are not around, it continues with that life. Any time of the day or night, you must ask three questions. Where is my child? Who is with my child? What is my child doing? Three questions. Where is my child? Who is with my child? What is my child doing? So, establish a rule. Let there be a rule that run that laws are important. You can do this. You can do that. These are way we run. These are values of the family. Communicate it. Communicate the values. Let them know. Daddy will not take this. Daddy will not take this. Daddy will not take this. It's very, very important. I told my daughter when the wedding finished, I said, Daddy was hard on you in the beginning, but it's for your own what? For your own good. If you are a father and you are not hard at a particular time, they should replace you. You are not a father. A father should defend the child. The child may not see what you are doing, but at the end of the day, they will thank you that this man defend me. Amen. I'll continue. My time is moving. Praise God. If you are still with me, shout hallelujah. There are seven essential tips to make you a good and effective parent. Seven. My God. Number one, use positive affirmation. Use what? Use what? Just put it on the board. Let them see, let them see what I'm saying. Say negative, positive thing to your child at all time. Be careful with your word. Look at your child. You are handsome. You are beautiful. I tell my daughters, you are beautiful. I say you are the most beautiful girl in the world. She really? I say yes. Because a lot of parents have, a lot of you have never received that from your parents. Your parents didn't tell you you are handsome, you are beautiful. And you are missing that. Because you need affirmation. Jesus was affirmed by God. Am I right? This is my what? In whom I am what? Hear ye him. If you don't call your child beautiful, who will call her beautiful? You are waiting for one guy, one random guy, and tell your girl, oh, look at your leg. Your leg is straight. And the girl also is checking the leg, whether he's straight. You don't even know whether he's straight or he's bent. Huh? Affirm your children. Affirm them. Are you with me? Whether they are boys or girls, what do you do? Affirm them. I tell my son, you are the best. You are as intelligent as I am. In fact, you are beating my intelligence nowadays. I remember one day I was in his house in America. I said, Daddy, you are too slow with what you are doing. I said, me, slow. <laughs> this is what I told you when you are growing. He said, Daddy, let me help you do that. Thing. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Somebody shout Hallelujah. So it's important to affirm your children. Some of you lack affirmation. That's why you have inferiority complex. Some of you have insecurity now. Because your parents did not tell you those things. You feel insecure. You see a beautiful girl looking very good that can compete for Miss World. But she will think something is missing. 
If I'm more bigger than this, I will be acceptable. If I'm more lighter in skin, I will be acceptable. If I'm more, well, you don't need anything. You are the best. Come and say I'm the best. Anybody taller than you is too tall. Anybody darker than you is too dark. You are the what? You are the best. Praise God. Are you still with me this morning? Positive affirmation. Africans don't know how to raise their children with positive affirmation. Come. Come. Coconut egg. Positive. Saying something good about your children. Are you with me? Let me give you half my time is gone. Oh my God. To be continued. Abby. Number two. Be present with them. Put the phone away. Turn off the TV. Close your laptop. Give your child 100% attention. How many percent? 100% attention. Why did you stop putting water here? Praise God. Now I want to drink water. No water. The whole world is hearing me. I know. They are hearing me in Canada. Praise God. Protocol, are you, are, you, are you with me? Always put water here. Whether we drink it or not, it's important. Always give your children attention. Give them what? Give them what? You say, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. When you are old, they will be busy old. Let me tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor. When they are old, when you are old, they will also be busy. Give them attention. Chat them. Talk with them. Study their mannerism. Capture all what they have become. Every time we travel on vacation, every time we travel on vacation, is the time I create time with my children. They will sleep on their bed. They will come early in the morning to our bed. We will all sleep together on the same bed, play. I'll be checking them. I'm a pastor, I'm a warrior, but I'm a, I'm a family man. Praise God. Me and my children wish to dance in the house. Praise God. My son is the best dancer. He's the, you know how to dance more than us. Praise God. Me and my daughter, we are practicing dancing. We dance that day at the reception. We dance at home. We practice. Say, Daddy, you are not moving the leg away. She's moving. Why, why we, life should not be too boring or full of battle. You are too hard. Don't be too hard about life. Are you with me? Number three, are you still with me? Don't let your perception become their reality. What does that mean? Don't limit your child based on your thoughts. Give them a big dream. How many, what kind of dream? You can make it. You can be better. You can be great. Amen. I didn't have money to send them abroad. But I push it until they walk. Some say push. That's the language I hear in the neighbor room. Abby, what does midwife say? Push. You push it until you win. Don't limit, don't, your small brain should not limit the life of that, those children. They can be better. They can be bigger. Praise God. Is somebody hearing me now? When my daughter told me, I want to go to the, one of the best university to study law in the U.S. Daddy, I want to go to Harvard. I said, I don't have money for Harvard. See, Daddy, there's nothing you want to do that God cannot help you. I said, but I don't have money for Harvard. He said, don't talk like that. You have trained me that I can do anything. So she went to a school, one of the best um, law school, law, law master's program. And she told me that they're going to give her, give me scholarship. I'm going to get scholarship, don't worry. That's how you push me into it too. 
and the scholarship they gave her was not enough. Praise God. I have to look for every way to pay. But today, everything is fine. Praise God. Even the wedding that was done, she paid a lot of money from her own pocket. Praise God. Because she has a job. Because she, we are able to push ourselves. I pray for parents that desire this. Your children will move forward. Amen. Show your children how to serve God. Show your children how to do what? Let them know that giving in church is our culture. Are you with me? You know, one day, my daughter in America took me to a, a ATM, and I a bank, and I collected $1,000. And so I started talking to Dr. A. O. It's your long phone. He said, Daddy, do you want to go and give the money, this money to Dr. A. O. It's your I said, no. He said, because I know you, you like giving money to pastors. I said, I'm training you to be giving money to what? Pastors. Learn, let your children see how you worship God. I'm going to stop here because of time. I will bless this morning. I will bless this morning. In the third service, we're going to do something different. We're going to have a talk show. We're going to compare the generational way of raising kids. We're going to have some people on this altar. We're going to compare the old school way of raising kids with the new school of raising kids. How many of you think it's a good idea? Huh? The way I was raised is not the way my parents were raised. My father allowed me to say anything, to ask questions. He doesn't shut me down. So I, I became bold. But some people are raised. You can't even talk. If you talk, get down! Even when you know something in class. When you, you, can, you are not bold to talk. When I was raising my kid, I raised them to be bold. To talk anywhere. They don't have, they, they, not that they, they, this, they, they, they are not afraid of people to say things. It's very, very important. I remember we had one guest speaker in Lekki Church one day, many years ago. And my daughter was a protocol bringing water. And when we finish, Pastor Femi introduced my daughter. I said, this is the pastor's kid. He's going to serve you food so that the pastor will feel free. That who is bringing food to me? And I said, this pastor, yeah. Oh, she said, you're a beautiful girl. He said, I know, sir. I know, sir. Praise God. Because I've told her at home that she's what? Nobody else should tell them that it's beautiful so that their head will not just scatter. And the pastor said, do you like the way I preach? Oh, he said, you blow my mind. He said, because all what I thought about you because was paparazzi, paparazzi. And I won't mention the pastor. He's a very paparazzi pastor. Are you with me? Yes. Gucci pastor. That time. That's what they call him. He said, but when you start breaking the scripture, I said, wow. So when my daughter leaves, he said, your daughter is bold. I said, that's the way I train her. I was proud that my daughter is what? Is your daughter bold? Rise up on your feet. Is somebody blessed today? We'll continue next week. Praise God. Next Sunday we'll continue. Praise God. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, give me power. Give me grace to raise my children well. Open your mother begin to pray. Wisdom. To raise them well. Let it fall upon me. Rebo shade. Rabba baba ke sade.